Hello, hello. It's been about a week. I shouldn't have left you without a dope podcast to listen to. What's going on, y'all? And thank you for coming back to yet another episode of Mental Health, The New Wealth. I am your host, Nikita Nicole, The Illuminist, and I am so excited that you can join me for yet another episode. Now, for this whole past month, we have definitely been on the love bus, but I couldn't let this day go by or this month without talking about something that is also important in this month. Now, personally for myself, I can't help but to celebrate this holiday every day because it is who I am inside and out, through and through, from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. From descendants of Africa is from which I came, and American is what I was born and where I reside. But I never lose the fact that I am a spiritual being here on this earth having a human experience. But we are still definitely gonna give honor to Black History Month, not only for the shortest month in the year February, but every day and in every way. So due to the fact that this show is called Mental Health The New Wealth, you know we always gotta bring something around to mental health awareness. And so because we are tying in Black History Month and Mental Health Awareness, the topic that we're going to speak about today is PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome. It is common and something that we deal with on a regular basis, especially in our demographic and in our culture. This is not always who we have been, but it is something that we are dealing with in a real way at this time. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that no other culture, no other demographic goes through PTSD. Please don't misunderstand me. But what I am saying is in honor of Black History Month, we are going to shed some light on how people of culture and color have been affected. We are gonna shed some light on what PTSD is, how it is diagnosed, what can be done about PTSD from this mental health disorder. So I invite you to stay with me on this journey. So sit back, relax, and let's get into this episode. Before we get into this episode, let me say that I am not a licensed mental health professional nor doctor, although I will host licensed professionals as guests from time to time. The mental health difficulties discussed on this podcast will come from extensive research, life experiences of myself and others, and are not to be taken as diagnosis, prescription, or cure to any health mental difficulties or disorders. If you are experiencing deep mental health difficulties of any kind and have lasted for any duration of time, please contact your local mental health professional for assistance with treatment. If you or someone you know is suffering with mental distress or thoughts of suicide, you are not alone. Please call the toll-free National Suicide Prevention Hotline, open 24-7 at 1-800-273-8255. Again, that is 1-800-273-8255. Now let's get into the episode. PTSD, also known as post-traumatic stress disorder, is a type of anxiety disorder in which a person has difficulty recovering after experiencing or witnessing a traumatic event. This condition can last for months, years, even lifetime with triggers that can bring back memories of traumatic events, resulting in intense emotional and physical reactions and symptoms. Okay, so when dealing with PTSD, to date there are six different disorders, starting with normal stress response. Stress response is standard fight or flight. So this is what we have innately within ourselves. If something happens or we feel that we are in danger, this is actually our natural way to alleviate ourselves or avoid ourselves from being in stressful or harmful situations. 
There's also acute stress disorder PTSD. This normally affects the person three days to one month after the event. Usually with this level of PTSD, there is a delayed response in how the person feels about traumatic event or experience. So when dealing with acute distress disorder, this usually deals with some type of physical act of abuse, rape, a fight, a car accident, something that happens very quickly and takes time for you to digest before you can really understand what has happened. There's also uncomplicated PTSD. This form of PTSD is very common as it comes and goes as you recall or think about traumatic experiences that have happened over time. However, this level of PTSD is not combined with any other level. Complex PTSD, this level of PTSD is normally long-term and it can dramatically affect the physical emotions and the effects that you experience on a regular basis. Complex PTSD is combined with other mental difficulties and disorders, exacerbating or aggravating the level of complex PTSD. A more severe case of complex PTSD is comorbid PTSD. This level of PTSD is combined with other mental difficulties and disorders with overlapping symptoms and is also coupled with physical effects that you feel over time with PTSD. So just as depression or any other mental health difficulty or disorder, after you go through certain levels of difficulties and disorders for so long, you start to feel the effects physically. So with this particular PTSD, it is combined with several other levels of PTSD as well as other mental health difficulties and disorders and physical ailments and triggers that you feel along with the PTSD. Here as of recently, they have discovered and named this level of PTSD which is dissociative. This level of PTSD is when you find yourself avoiding people, places, or things that remind you of the trigger or traumatic events and experiences. So just say, for instance, if you were in a bad car accident, it would be very hard for you to drive or get in the car with others. If you got in a fight or saw something very traumatic in a public place, it might be hard for you to go out in public again or experience places that are very loud with a lot of people and a lot of commotion going on. Now, I'm sure at one moment or another, we have all experienced some level of PTSD, if nothing else, normal stress response. It's a natural thing that we experience on a regular basis. However, when you experience normal stress response on a regular basis, it can develop to some of these other forms of PTSD. PTSD requires a medical diagnosis, but some of the symptoms include nightmares, insomnia, memories of trauma, heightened reaction or anxiety, depression, agitation and irritability, hostility and hypervigilance, isolation, distrust, fear, amongst so many others. And just going through these levels of PTSD and their symptoms, I know that I definitely have suffered from PTSD also. Thinking of PTSD, although I was able to break these down in different areas for you, that it makes a permanent indent in your life mentally and psychologically. Sometimes the experience can be so traumatic that mentally and physically you can be stuck at that point. So what I mean by that is just say for instance, um, something happened and you were incarcerated or you saw somebody get murdered just say for instance, and I'm not using this as a trigger, but I'm just using this as an example. So I pray that this finds you well, but someone experienced something of that level. Depending on the severity of the trauma, the person can sometimes get stuck in that error right at that moment. So have you ever seen somebody that walks around and they're stuck in the seventies? They use seventies jargon. They dress like the seventies, they still keep up appearances and relationships and do the same thing as if they were still in the 70s, but in the modern day. Somebody like that has experienced a very traumatic situation to where their brain got stuck at that moment. 
because of whatever they experienced, their brain could not go further past that point. It almost like stunted the growth of the person. But just imagine some of the levels of PTSD that we experience on a regular basis. We have almost developed the dissociation level of PTSD on a regular basis. We are walking around numb. There are so many things that happen to us on a regular basis. There are so many experiences that we have to go through on a regular basis that are of no control of our own, that we have developed a way to function in toxicity on a regular basis, especially in the urban and cultured communities. We have had to make a way out of no way, remain resilient in the face of continual resistance to our advancement. And not only in this time frame that we live in now, hell, and now coming on two years, we got PTSD from the pandemic. We have to readjust on how to communicate with one to another. And and please allow me to say that I think majority of us are walking around with comorbid PTSD because we have overlying issues one on top of another, whether it was how you were raised, how you grew up as a child, your experiences with your peers and other like-minded or not like-minded individuals, your communities and neighboring environment, your thought process and how you saw communication, how you experienced love and how that looks like for you in your adult life. There are so many facets that we have to adjust with on a regular basis, not to mention what we see on social media, what we see in our news, how we interact with our family and the people that are directly related to us and how we relate to ourselves. And mind you, might I add, that these all were programs or all are programs that we have been given. Now in this day and age, you have to fight really hard to have your own mind, to focus and move in your own consciousness, to be connected to the divine and be led by that instead of what we see and experience on a regular everyday basis. It is almost common to see someone get killed in front of us at this point. It is almost common to see someone slain in cold blood and nothing happened so far as repercussions to the person that did that. Even the fact that we are given one short month out of the year to represent who we are. And we are to be excited about that as if we're, we have been gifted something of honor. Nah, baby, you're not going to give me the shortest month out of the year. I'm going to celebrate, I'm going to honor, I'm going to cultivate who I am, what my culture is 365 days of the year. And to add, especially that we did not come from this. We came from kings and queens, gods and goddesses, Mansa Musa, a Mali ruler, the richest man in the world. We come from kingdoms of Congo, Zimbabwe, Benin, Ethiopian empires. We come from greatness. Don't get me wrong, I can see why you're a little bit agitated when just waking up every day looking to the sun and the sun's very purpose. I can see how a person get a little jealous when a person was the first civilization and you were taught how to bathe. You were taught the ways of looking at the world and how travel by the stars. You were taught about aromatics and herbs about medicinal remedies before you even knew what a doctor was. We were the first healers, the first teachers. So I can see from time to time how that can be irritating. But like they say, if you can't beat them, join them. But instead of honoring the very beings that we are on a regular basis, there is so much time, money, and energy spent in making sure that our penile glands are clogged, that we are sourced and given foods that kill us and snuff out our life expectancy, that our children are taught at bare minimum level as to not advance and surpass those of our other cultural counterparts. But it's not on us, it's in us. We have been royal since the beginning, draped in fine jewels and naturally rulers over all that we see and we touch. So when you come from that, just imagine the level of PTSD that you experience. Living in 2022, modern, being captive not only by other enslavements, but your own people from 1619 to 1865, having to in modern day 
retrain your mind from the things and the experiences that you have had in decades and generations. Now, there was not a level of PTSD that spoke about that, but I do strongly believe that there are levels of generational PTSD. The PTSD that is suffered from generation to generation, the PTSD that is handed down because no one ever broke that tie and it was in your lineage to do. When you subconsciously feel the post-traumatic stress from your ancestors having to get up at the crack of dawn before the sun to start working only to return that night when it was dark again. No rest, no break. Maybe you can get a little cup full of water and your sack better be full of resource to th- supply the economy. So l- let me take y'all back. Let's let's just think about what that looks like, right? So if we're thinking about 400 years, right? Enslaved, the life expectancy of a slave from birth to when they will be expected to die is 22 years old. Imagine that. So you were only expected to live on this earth 22 years as a slave. It was so strenuous, so brutal that you were not really expected to live after that age. The things that you ate, the level of work that you had and the trauma that you experienced and the stress that you had to endure just did not give you a long life expectancy. So if that's the case for 400 years and you're only living to about 22 years of age, just say putting 22 back to back. So 22, you live, you die. 22, you live, you die. So if you use that analogy, there's only 18 generations in that whole time span. Now, I know that we're living a lot more these days, but just imagine walking around subconsciously with 18 generations of collective thoughts, mindsets, and experiences in one body. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine going from being royal kings and queens to being enslaved, to being looked at as less than an animal, to be cattled and prodded as industry tools? There was a manual written called the Willie Lynch letter. If you don't know nothing about black history or enslavement in general, Read the Willie Lynch letter. And why I say that it's important to read that is this was a manual. It talked about the different forms that you need to do, the different psychological things that you need to do, the different physical things that you need to do. It it was a real life manual for slave masters on how to control, dominate, multiply, and manipulate enslavement. So if you read the Willie Lynch letter, a lot of the things that we are experiencing now are the same exact things. Yes, it may look a little different, dressed a little different, but it's the same exact thing. The separation of the household, the disconnection between the feminine and the masculine, the disconnection from the father and his son, the coddling of the mother to their children almost to level of handicap, y'all got to tap into the Willie Lynch letter because it'll blow your mind how similarly that these tactics that they were taught are still being used today. And then after, quote unquote, the slaves were free, then we went into sharecropping, which was still another level of enslavement, almost working tirelessly for something that you almost could never attain. We came up in the Jim Crow era. There were so many things that we had to adapt to as a culture and as a people. And I'm not even just talking about specifically Black or African-American people, brown people, and people of color in general. We had to go through the most. And that's just to get up to today, modern day. That's what we deal with on a regular basis. So definitely and for sure, we have PTSD as a collective. We have PTSD generationally. We have PTSD in our relationships. We have PTSD with our children, with our mate, with the people that we see and interact with on a regular basis. 
we we got PTSD straight up. We are definitely post-traumatically stressed for sure. But what I can say and what I will always say is we are a resilient people. We are a brilliant people. We are a powerful people. We are loving, kind, and thoughtful. We are a passionate people. Regardless of the things that have been done to us, We are a sovereign and righteous people. We should be walking around here ready to tear this shit down. Yes, we get upset. Yes, there are consistent times of hurt and pain. Yes, there is confusion. Yes, we don't understand a lot, but we get up every day and we do this shit day after day because we don't know how to do nothing else but be us. The culture, our culture, the original, what everybody want to emulate and duplicate can't even truly walk a second in our shoes. So I am making this podcast today to salute you, to say I see you. I respect you too much to even tell you happy Black History Month because we are so much more. So I'm going to say to you, happy solar return. We are a solar people. Why you think everything we got to do with got soul in it? soul food, soul music. We are a solar people and we feel with our soul and spirit and are connected to the divine and our representations of the most high beings that ever energetically graced this planet. So while we have gone through the ringer and we done been through some stuff and we are continuing to go through things, we will make it. Y'all hear me? Don't grow weary and well-doing. Attempt to minimize your stressors as much as you can. Listen to your spirit, mind, and body when it's time to let things go, let things flow, to reduce the level of PTSD that you experience. Start to address some of those issues. Let's not act like things are not happening so that you are just walking around a shell, a numb avatar, a program. Everybody want to get out your feelings, you and your feelings. You need to be in your feelings because your feelings are an indication of how you are faring with the things that are going on in your life and around you. So you don't have to be led by your feelings, but you definitely need to feel what you feel. And that's okay. Don't let nobody program you into thinking that it is something wrong with having emotions, that it is something wrong to responding to things that are immorally and spiritually not aligned with who you were innately created to be. Just as you experience some of the levels of the PTSD from your ancestors, so on and so forth, you hear that unctioning in your spirit when you need to stand up for yourself when you need to speak up for yourself, when you need to not tolerate certain things, when you need to treat yourself more kindly, when your responses need to be out of love and compassion, when you need to tell a motherfucker no, you feel these things. Develop and strengthen your subconscious and cultivate wellness in in your everyday life. So you know your girl can't go without letting you know some remedies that can help you with PTSD. Now, I'm gonna just throw these in here to get these on out the way because you already know this is what we about and this is what we do to err on the side of balance. You're gonna make sure you always get your rest. You're gonna make sure of that. You're gonna make sure that you're eating live and vibrant foods. Cut down on meat, do intermittent fasting from time to time and get the book Eat Right for Your Blood Type. Just because veganism and other forms of eating are in and popular at this time does not mean necessarily that that's how you need to be eating and fueling your body on a regular basis. I'm not saying I'm against it or for it. I'm saying do what's best for you. So definitely get eat right for your blood type so you can understand and start to practice getting and consuming the foods that are best for you. Get you some exercise, move that body around. I don't care how you do it. If you put on your favorite songs and you dance for an hour, I don't care how you do it, but make sure you move your body around. Another thing that can energetically help is making sure that every now and then you clear your energetic space. Get you some sage, some white sage, some Palo Santo, and on a regular basis, clear and intent your space. As people come around you, as people come in your space, in and out of your house, in and out of your office, in and out of your workspace, it's very important that you get all vibrational energy 
energy that is not of the highest regard and that is not necessarily belonging to you out of your space. So that is something that I would say that you need to do on a regular basis, at least once a week and maybe even more if you're in constant contact with a lot of people on a regular basis. Another thing that you can physically do if you are suffering from high levels of PTSD is make sure that you soak in baths or water with Epsom salt and make sure you tap in and get you some massages. Like I said in the last episode, I just recently made me an appointment to go get a massage. I usually do it on a regular basis, but I had got busy and it had been a while since I had done that. But I'm telling you, when you release the toxins out of your muscles and some of those tight spots and some of those tension spots, you really feel a lot better and it moves around the emotions and the things that you have been harboring in your body. You want to release and move those things around because if you allow them to get hard and calcify, that is when you start having other ailments and developing levels of cancer. Cancer is not nothing. It's excess stress on the body that the body cannot eliminate. Whether it's stress from food that it cannot compute, whether it's stress from you having bad habits, whether it's stress from you not moving around, whether it's stress from your environment or the things that you're intaking on a regular basis, that is all that cancer is. So you don't want to continue to have PTSD, depression, anxiety, taking all these meds, doing all these things, because basically it's just going to develop into a dis-ease, dis-ease of your body, mind, and spirit. Now, I am going to throw in these things that you will be able to do so far as therapy is concerned. And there are different forms of therapy that can help and assist with levels of PTSD. So we have cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. This level of therapy focuses on the relationship regarding the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. So during this therapy, you're targeting the current problems and symptoms and focusing on changing patterns of behavior, thoughts, and feelings that lead to difficulty in functioning. So you're more so going through your thought process and thinking about things that trigger you and working those things out. This can be done solely or with a group or your family. There's also cognitive processing therapy. This particular therapy is a 12-week course of treatment with weekly sessions about 60 to 90 minutes. In these sessions, you initially talk about the traumatic event, after which you write all the things that happened in the traumatic event that you had no control over, helping you to move forward. So this level of therapy helps you to understand that although things have happened to you, good, bad, and different or ugly, that most times things happen as they should happen. Now, one would think, how can I process something negatively happening to me as something being good? But if you think about it, if you did not do the things that caused that traumatic event to happen, another level of therapy dealing with PTSD is prolonged exposure therapy. This normally is eight to 15 sessions in 90 minute intervals. After you've been taught breathing techniques to ease anxiety, you write down a list of the things that you've been avoiding or negating to do and learn how to face them and reintegrate yourself into these situations and scenarios. So you're not integrating yourself into harmful things, but just say for instance, if you don't like to go out in public, If you're not going to certain places because they remind you of certain things, but it used to be a thing that you once enjoyed, you would start integrating those parts of your life in again, slowly but surely. And when you get triggered by these occurrences or almost go into a PTSD anxiety attack, you use your breathing techniques to help you ease the level of anxiety so that you can take on these tasks little by little until they're no longer a problem. And last but not least is stress inoculation training. So this level 
of therapy doesn't necessarily go over the actual trauma that you experience, but helps you to understand how to deal with your stress triggers so that you don't let your stress levels get so high to develop PTSD. So this is more of like a precautionary therapy for PTSD or mild levels of PTSD because with this level of therapy, nothing has abruptly or traumatically happened to you at that moment. Or if it had, you're not really addressing that portion of it, but more so how to deal with stress on a regular basis. So as I gave you those nuggets, I hope they were able to help you shed some light on some of the levels of PTSD that you might experience on a regular basis. I hope this episode was empowering for you. And if no one has told you, I love you and you are not alone. Let's continue to get in this work mentally, spiritually, and physically so that we can reduce if not eliminate some of these mental health difficulties and disorders. And remember always your mental health 